Hey, I'm Riley, the project manager here at the Center for New Music. I manage all of our marketing and communications here at the venue. I've also worked for organizations like Post Ballet and Dance Film SF and promote and produce my own concerts. One of the things I've learned working here is that the best turnout happens when both the venue and the artist are working together in tandem to help promote the event. So I'm here today to talk about the essentials of what you need to know about how best to market your event and how to work with a venue and how to provide them materials so that they can do their best job of promoting your event. First off, let's talk photos. Good artist photos are essential. You need to have high res photos that are up to date and ideally you should have a couple different options to choose from. We need a few different options because we need the photos for different circumstances like print materials or web banners or Instagram posts. All of those things have different dimensions and different formats that are preferred. So if we have a few options to choose from, then that makes our job of promoting your show a lot easier and it looks better on the final product. Do you play in a band or an ensemble? If so, try to have a group photo on hand. If you send a presenter lots of different photos of all the different artists, all those photos might have different looks and different formats, and they might not look very professional when collaged together. Or the presenter might not have time to collage all those photos together, all of which means the presenter might not be able to do their best job of marketing your event. What does high res mean? A good rule of thumb is if the image is less than two or three megabytes, it might not be high res enough for situations like print materials. If you wanna get technical about it, open up a photo editor and click on file info, and the image should have at least a 300 PPI, pixels per inch, resolution. Ideally, if you can take press photos with a professional photographer, that is very valuable. However, if that makes your wallet nervous, don't worry. Most modern smartphones are more than capable enough to create high-res photos if the lighting is good. So you can have your friends take photos of you at shows and or schedule a photo shoot with a friend in front of an interesting background. Do you have professional photos but they're maybe five or ten years old? Try to keep them up to date. One of the interesting things I've learned working with dance companies is that they often schedule a photo shoot for every new production. What this does is it brands a production with a new set of images. If you've been using the same images from 2010, when someone comes across that photo, they might associate it with a past production, and they might not realize that you're actually doing something new and exciting. Okay, enough about photos. When and how often should you start marketing your event? Ideally, you should start thinking about marketing at least two or three months in advance of your concert. Usually it takes people more than once to see something about an event before they actually commit, before they actually buy a ticket. So just one or two posts about an event a week before the concert doesn't quite cut it to get the type of audience that you want for your show. Announce the show a few months in advance and then schedule a steady crescendo of posts and promotions, letting people know about why your concert is exciting, when it's happening, etc. When working with a presenter, be aware of any deadlines that they might give you. If you miss those deadlines and if you don't get them your materials, then you might miss their print calendar or you might miss their event calendar, all of which means that they might not be able to do their best job of promoting your show. Even in today's digital age, word of mouth is still the most powerful marketing tool that you have. Make sure to take time to invite friends, colleagues, students as you run into them and let them know about your event. If you have an advisory board or a board of directors for your ensemble, or maybe even just an influential friend, mobilize them to help spread the word about the concert. Perhaps schedule uh, an hour or two, about a week or two before your event to send out messages, text, or emails, creating personal invites to the show. 
Notice I said personal invites and not a uh, spammy group message or something that was very clearly copy and pasted. Uh, pro tip would be to have a friends and family discount code and send people a message letting them know that you really care that they're there at your show. Okay, we've all had that moment at a gallery reading a gallery blurb or at a concert talk where there are all these words happening and you need three PhDs and a postdoctoral fellowship to understand what the hell is being said. Don't do that in your marketing language. Not only does that push people away in general, it also really affects your audience's diversity because perhaps English is not someone's first language or perhaps people have different hearing or visual capabilities. Communicate with people when the show is, where it is, what exactly will happen at the event and why it's important and exciting in a concise and clear manner. All right, we've already talked a little bit about social media, but here are a few tips specific to social media and web promotion. On social media, video is king. It gets the most engagement because it captures people's attention. A pro tip, if you have great video, embed it in the platform that you're posting on. If you send a link to somewhere else like YouTube or a web page, then people are less likely to click on that because they might not want to leave the platform that they're scrolling through. If you don't have any relevant video for your concert, don't worry. Um, one option is to create a slideshow of artist photos or photos that are related to your event and then put some music previewing the concert underneath. You can also use photos or other types of media. Any kind of media is going to be uh, more powerful than just posting text or just sending a link to a website. Keep your content varied. You don't want to keep posting the same content over and over or people will start to ignore it. Keep in mind that um, online and in general, people have short attention spans and they're distracted easily. What that means is that if you don't have a clear path to buy tickets or uh, a clear way to RSVP or engage in some way, then even if the people are interested in the event, they, you might lose them because they get distracted and then they forget to go buy that ticket or they forget to RSVP. Lastly, be professional but be you. Try to keep those two things top of mind whenever you're posting on social media or doing any sort of promotional endeavor. You want to be genuine and be yourself and let people know why you're really excited about our particular production. At the same time, try to also be professional. Um, remember that if there are grammatical mistakes or misspellings or perhaps things like pixelated photos or a weirdly formatted picture, then people might unfortunately associate that with the level of professionality of your music. In the contemporary music world, as you probably know, Budgets are limited and the level of marketing capacity that a presenter has varies. What we're able to do, for example, is provide a monthly postcard with all of our shows and a large print calendar that goes in our window. We also send out a bi-monthly digital newsletter and we post on social media a couple times about the event. And we also submit the event to a few key event calendars. Other presenters, might have very limited marketing capacity and they might only be hosting your event physically in their space but they might not provide any promotional services. So all of this is to say um, just be really clear about the presenter that you're working with about what they're able to provide. That's usually in for us for example our concert submission form or if you're working with a larger presenter you might have a contract just be clear about what they're able to provide and what you need to do to get butts in seats. For better or for worse, as artists, we're often left to be our own entrepreneurs, our own managers, our own marketers. So developing these skills to produce and promote your show is paramount to the success of your artistic career 
and the size of your audiences. Thanks for listening. I hope this was really useful for you and best of luck promoting your show. If you're in the Bay Area, we hope you come to Center for New Music to check out our show and check out centerfornewmusic.com to see how we can produce and promote your show right here at the Center.